Intel recently held a ribbon cutting event at their Fab 34 in Leipzig in Ireland and they are very excited. This is the first example of high volume manufacturing of EUV silicon in the world. This silicon is going to go into Meteor Lake or as we now call it Intel Core Ultra. The numbers around Fab 34 are significant. Intel says they have invested 17 billion euros. The new Fab involved 44 million work hours and they had 8,700 or more staff on site during construction. Loads of companies were involved. This is a real boost for the Irish economy. Indeed, the event was so significant that not only was CEO of Intel Pat Gelsinger present and correct, but so too was the Irish Taoiseach, or Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar. The images from inside the fab look similar to those that we've previously seen from Israel, Malaysia and other Intel clean rooms. It's clear that Fab 34 is a big deal for Intel. But what is this? An opening event for a new fab in Ireland? Intel's had a presence in Ireland for absolutely years. And Fab 34? Does Intel have 34 fabs? We can see on this diagram that Intel has locations around the world. We've previously looked at this when we visited Israel with Intel and more recently Malaysia. As you can see from the blue boxes, Intel has fabs in many locations. Does it really have 34 fabs? The fact is the numbering system that Intel uses for their fabs is slightly confusing. So if the number ends in a 1, it's likely to be in Oregon in the USA, which is their R&D center. If it ends in a 2, so fab 12, fab 22, fab 32. If it ends in a 4, we're looking at Likeslip in Ireland. Funnily enough, they started with Fab 10 in Ireland and then renumbered and Fab 14, 24 and now 34. Ohio in the USA gets 7. That's currently Fab 27. Israel gets 8. So the original Fab 8 was in Jerusalem and now 28 and 38 are in Kiryat Gat. And 9 will be assigned to Germany. This is the planned Magdeburg site which is due to start operation in 2027. Intel had a number of speakers at this event and while most of them were politicians, to give them their due, they spoke very briefly. We'll come to the political side of things shortly. Let's first discuss technology. Intel's Dr. Ann Kelleher is a very senior technical figure. About two years ago, Pat coined the term five nodes in four years. Our first one, Intel 7, is done. After today, I'm officially calling Intel 4 done. Intel 3 is in development, is coming, and is doing very well. And then we have some very fundamental architecture change in our technology, which is on Intel 20A and Intel 18A, and they're also progressing very well. So I'm happy to say five nodes in four years is progressing well, and my bumper sticker hasn't worn off yet. She made it clear that they are producing chips on Intel 4. We know they're using EUV, and of course we understand these chips are going into Meteor Lake. But what exactly are they doing in Meteor Lake? Which part of Meteor Lake are they? As I've previously covered, the design of Meteor Lake is a multi-tile affair. There's a base tile and then four tiles on top. Compute, graphics, I.O. and the SOC or system on chip. We are confident the graphics tile will be manufactured on TSMC N5 and the SOC and the I.O. tiles on TSMC N6. The base tile is made by Intel, so this leaves the compute tile. There have been reports that the compute tile will also be made by TSMC. However, other reports have said that the high-end compute tiles will come from TSMC and the low-end compute tiles from Intel. I understand there are two versions of the compute tile. They all use Redwood Cove for the P cores and Gracemont for the E cores. The configurations are two P cores plus eight E cores for the low-end and six P cores plus eight E cores for the high-end. And I've been told both versions are coming out of Likeslip from Intel. The curious thing is that these days that sounds like good news. In the past the idea that three out of four tiles would come out of TSMC would have seemed quite heretical. These days the idea that Intel might manufacture their own compute tiles well, that's good news. To put this in context and to refer to Intel's five nodes in four years roadmap, Intel 7 is done and now Intel 4 is also done. And the next step is Intel 3, 
which will be an improvement on Intel 4, also coming out of Ireland. We also need to consider why Intel is investing in Lightslip. Perhaps it's just a lovely place to work. It might be full of brilliant people. It could also be the EU and the Irish governments contribute money to the projects. No doubt all of those things are true, but there are broader issues to consider. First, listen to these quick clips from Pat Gelsinger. And here we are in Ireland. You know, when I've, uh, you know, when you think about uh, silicon, you know, we call the Silicon Valley. Intel, and our founders, the Trinity, as I call it, Grove Moore and Noyce, they put silicon into Silicon Valley. Well, here we are, the Silicon Isle. And with our partnerships that we have with the EU, you know, the announcements of our projects in Poland and uh, Germany, combined with what we're already doing here in our research efforts, you know, this is first of a kind. You know, and as I uh, meet with uh, CEOs and leaders of European companies, I says I want them to be, be able to stand on the top of their buildings, pull out a telescope, and say, "That's my fab." And we're committed to bring ourselves back to leadership, not just for Intel not just for the industry, but for US and Europe leadership for the long term. And then we have Mareed McGuinness, who is the European Commissioner for Financial Services and Financial Stability. But in one sense, there's something very earthy about Intel, uh, about what you do, not only what you say you'll do, but what you deliver. And I was particularly really keen to see the sustainability issues because the future is green and digital. My area of finance is driving that through green finance and through making sure that we don't have greenwashing. We need and deserve clean water, clean air, and a sustainable economy and society. And the work you do here, the products you deliver, will help us achieve all of that. But there was one big reason why I'm so happy I could be here, and it is about Europe waking up to realities, some of them not very comforting realities. We are over-reliant in energy, for example, on unreliable partners, and we've had to respond, and we've done that. When it comes to technology, we need to do what you're doing here. We need to champion what's happening here. And this is an Irish story, of course, but it's a European story, and I was really happy that everyone mentioned that European dimension. And finally, we have the Irish Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar. It seems a bit cliche to say it, but we are living through a period of unprecedented change. Geopolitics and global supply chains, record global temperatures, and breakneck technological advancement, ranging from AI to robotics to remote working. And in that world, Ireland needs to stand up and be counted, to advocate for multilateralism, countries working together, for free trade, for free enterprise, for democracy and human rights. We have an interest in promoting these values. They've served us well, but we know that they've served the world well too and are in retreat in many parts of the world today, unfortunately. At the EU table, we're supporting efforts to become more autonomous. Uh, open strategic autonomy is the term that people like to use. And that could mean practically anything. My takeaway is that the Americans and the EU are deeply concerned about China and are, to use another word, decoupling just as fast as they can. It's clear when you look at Meteor Lake that an awful lot of the silicon comes out of TSMC. Intel, in the short term, is going to be working very closely with TSMC. That, at the moment, means TSMC in Taiwan. However, TSMC is busy working on fabs in mainland America. They're going a little bit slower than TSMC had hoped, but give it three years, four years, five years, it's entirely possible that if Intel is still working with TSMC, that those chips will actually come out of America rather than Taiwan. I have to say, taking together the words of those three very senior people, I'm not filled with any confidence about the medium and long-term future of Taiwan. Fab 34 in Ireland, that's going very nicely. As for the broader picture, it seems like a chill wind is blowing.